Welcome to update number four for Rocket Frame 87. The project is a building and exploring simulator where you control three crash survivors stranded on an alien world. The project is still in an early stage right now and I'm working through the game mechanics, but with this update I'm much closer to the point where I can start bringing story development into the project, so I am pretty happy about that. The big improvements in this update are the building functionality and the new research module. So let's start with buildings. The last update focused on the process of constructing buildings. So select where you put them, the building material requirements, and so forth. This update focuses on what you can do with the buildings once they're finished. All buildings in game will have unique functions depending on type and level, and bringing up the buildings menu by right-clicking on it. So we will start with uh, like a settlement core building. So in this case, the campsite, which is kind of your core. And you can access the main inventory from here. Um, the big new feature here is this aggregate button. Um, so if you want to aggregate, basically all that does is it allows you to, when you send your guys out to gather resources, uh, it transfers all the resources straight into your main inventory so you don't have to send them back and forth 20 times, uh, picking stuff up and dropping it off. So it makes things much more convenient. So let's uh, just send him out. I think, yeah, let's go with some logs, so he will start gathering logs. The other thing you'll notice, um, the uh, campsite will also tend to bring up some basic information about your camp, so uh, what your shelter quality is, the number of spaces, and so forth, um, so that's uh, obviously handy. And where are we, how's he coming along? I think he's making some progress, Actually, so let's go back here. And we'll see app logs. So he's managed to gather five logs in this time. So that's good. That is enough for now. Um, the next thing, obviously, the residential structures like the hut, uh, th these work pretty much automatically. So they will hold a certain number of colonists, and the colonists will automatically go into the highest quality structure they can find. Um, and uh, that will determine how happy they are with their, their residents. So let's go to the production type building. So if we pick the work, uh, workshop, um, let's send Jake over there. This is our workshop. So workshop is good for doing basic crafting activities. Um, and uh, based on this, you see there are uh, various recipes available. So we can cut firewood, dry fruits and vegetables, um, and you'll notice that only one of these actually highlights green because it means you have the proper material. So you could dry fish if you actually had them, but you can't. Um, however, we have enough resource that we can create a torch. So we can start that project, um, but the building doesn't do anything by itself. You need to actually assign our worker to it. So if we have, we still have Jake here uh, highlighted. So we assign him. He has a crafting skill of 100, which is basically the base skill. Um, and we see that the creating the torch has begun. So we don't need to do anything more with that. He will just do his own thing there and we can start playing with somebody else. So the other thing to take a look at, and let's highlight something else here. So we have Corky. So we see the torch is almost done and torch is ready, gets put straight into inventory. So the amount of recipes that you have and the amount of uh, things that you can produce depends not on the building, but on the person who is in the building. So if we, let's exit uh, here briefly and let's just uh, highlight a couple things here. So if we click on Sarah, go to her display and her first skill is in science. So uh, another new thing that I've implemented here is the skill tree. Uh, the skill tree is not finished, but uh, I did a couple of basic skills just to kind of test things out. So she has a skill in science. Corky, on the other hand, if we take a look at his skills, he has a skill in crafting. So if we highlight him, we notice there's only a few recipes available, but if we assign Corky to the building, now we have both Jake and Corky in here. So Corky number one has a higher crafting skill. He's got a 5% bonus, but you'll notice since he's skilled, there's a bunch more recipes that have come up. So we can craft a spear, a spear. <laughs> we can do a bow, arrows, all kinds of various things. Um, so just for kicks, let us do, let's see, torch we've already done. Let's do some arrows. Good. So 
It's going to take us a while to do the arrows. That's a pretty complicated process. Good. So the next thing I want to highlight is if we switch to the experimental garden, it's a similar setup. I'll select Sarah and do the experimental garden. So right now, you have not uh, researched anything that allows you to uh, do plants. You need to do that first. Um, and that actually brings up the interplay between the next module that I did, which is the research module. So the thing with Rocket Frame 87 is even though you start building really simple buildings, research doesn't start out at the Stone Age. So research is focused on exploring an alien planet. So there are some basic topics but a lot of the research requires you to go out and discover something before you can research it. So if we switch back and go into the new research mode. So we see, uh, number one, the topics that are available, just a couple of them. And then we can also see once we've completed something, uh, the information about that will come up here. Right? So let's research life on Gestroff. And to make things simpler, I have incorporated a cheat code in here. So the actual research process will uh, magically happen much more rapidly. Let's see, it's progressing. And once we've completed that, a bunch more topics become available. So the next topic in this chain, edible flora, we wanna see if there's something around that we can possibly eat. So we will also magically zoom through this. Good. Now, the one interesting thing is that uh, some of these things are basically testing seeds and so forth, and those are things you already have. But if it comes to looking at some of the uh, plants that are already here, it's not just a matter of uh, doing the research. You have to, oops, I had that set on high speed. You have to actually find the plants first. So see there's nothing available, so she has to go out and find some interesting looking plants. And so I'll send her out here. You see, aha, it's a berry bush. That looks like it might have something. Would be of interest. Now, normally this would turn green, which means you could harvest it, but you haven't researched it yet. However, you have now detected it. So since it's been detected, discovered, we go into research mode, we see, ah, red berries. That now becomes available as a research topic. Click on it. Do your research. It is now complete. It's under completed research, red berries. And if we switch back to Sarah here, we'll see, ah, we're now able to harvest these. So that's about this. Uh, that's about it for this update. Um, the next project I'll be working on is the incorporation of mission quests and NPC conversations, and that's the module that's really going to allow me to put the story into the project. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but uh, nevertheless, happy about getting some of this uh, basic research and building functionality. It's another key part of the story. So thanks for watching and have a great day.